Hey, we're going to be covering chapter 4, sections 1 and 2. This will be covering the quadratic functions in their standard vertex and intercept forms. So section 4.1 is graph quadratic formulas in standard form. So standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c when ax is not 0. So we could have 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. That could be a quadratic formula in standard form. Now the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola, with the parent graph being f of x equals x squared. So that's what this graph is here. This is f of x equals x squared. And this graph has a, an axis of symmetry, this dashed line here, which divides the parabola into mirror images. So the left side and the right side are exactly the same. And this axis of symmetry passes through the vertex. So the vertex here, let me move cross shift a little bit, the vertex is the lowest or highest point of the quadratic function, or the parabola. And here on the graph, it's 0, 0. So the axis of symmetry will pass through it, and it is the lowest point. So another point on the parabola is we know that if a is greater than 0, and a is our constant in front of the x squared, if a is greater than 0, then our parabola will face or open up. Now if it's less than 0, it will open down. And there's a trick we learned for this when I learned this that, you know, if it's negative, then you're sad, so it's kind of like an up unhappy face. I don't know, however you want to remember it. So we're going to approach a problem from the book, and that is to graph y equals negative 1 half x squared plus 3. So our first step when approaching this problem is to find the vertex. That is, with this formula here, we're going to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. So the formula is x equals negative b over 2a. So if you remember our formula, we have y equals ax squared plus bc plus bx, excuse me, plus c. So we can take our b, which in this case is 0. So we have 0 over 2 times negative one-half, and this is negative to find our x value of the vertex. So when we simplify this, we get zero. So the, the x coordinate for the vertex is zero. And now we need to plug this in to find the y coordinate. So we have y equals negative one-half, zero squared plus three. So this is going to be zero plus three, which is just three. So we have 0, 3 as our vertex. Next, we need to decide which way does our graph open. And remember, I talked about this in the last slide, that if A is positive, it opens up, and if it is negative, it opens down. Now we can identify this as negative, and therefore it will open down. So down, and we can even draw a little sketch here, down. Next, we need to draw our axis of symmetry. So I'm going to pull up a graph paper sheet here. So if you remember from before, we know that our axis of symmetry passes through the vertex. So we know our vertex, let's graph that. So 0, 3, 1, sorry, 1, 2, 3 is here. So this is our vertex. And our axis of symmetry will pass through the vertex. So it can either be a line like this or a line like this. But since we know that our graph opens up, we know that our line will be, our graph will be like this. So our axis of symmetry is not this line, but rather this vertical line on the y-axis. So that is our axis of symmetry, let's label that. And then our next step is to find the y-intercept. So in our equation, we know that the c value is actually our y-intercept value. So next, we can see that this value is 3. So we have 0, 3, which is, happens to be the same thing as our vertex, because it makes sense because the vertex is on our y-axis, and therefore that is also the y-coordinate. So y-coordinate also 
zero, three. Next, we will find our point to draw our parabola. Because this really isn't going to be a parabola, I was just using this for the demonstration of the y or ac axis of symmetry. Sorry, so I need to redraw that. Say dashed line. And then we need to plug in another point to find, plug in another value for x to find another point. So we're going to, um, I'm going to take and move this equation down here. So we have, oops, I'll just write it down. We have y equals negative one half x squared plus three. This is our equation. And now we need to plug in another value for x. So we can either make a table, but this time we're just plugging in one point. So we can really just put in, so we have y equals negative one half, let's say one squared plus three. For y, we get negative one half plus three. That y is five over two or two and a half. So for our point, we have one as our x value and 2.5 as our y value, and this is another point. So let's plot this. We go over one and up two and a half. And now I actually am realizing that I was wrong before when I just sketched out the problem because it actually is going down, as I said. But I um, forgot to remember that it was down, so I just drew it up, but it actually is down. Now, since we know this point on the right, and we know that any point on one side of the axis of symmetry is a mirror image on the other side. We can reflect any point onto the other side. So we actually have this point also here. And then we can connect this and draw our parabola. So next we're going to be going over max and min values. So we're talking about here the maximum and the minimum values. And that, so if we have our graph of um, a parabola in which a is less than zero, we're going to have it going down. As we know, it opens down. And our maximum is the vertex's y coordinate. So this is the highest point of the parabola, and therefore it makes sense that it's the maximum. And so if you want to write down the maximum of this and say the vertex was 0, 5, 5 would be our maximum. Now for this graph on the right, we have a is greater than zero, so our graph, so our parabola is going up, is opening up. So we have our vertex is y coordinate once again, but this time it's zero, zero as our vertex. So therefore our y coordinate, our min is zero. So this is the lowest point of the parabola, therefore the minimum. So chapter four, section two, is titled Graph Quadratic Formulas in Vertex or Intercept Form. So just a reminder, this is what standard form is, and now we're going to be moving on to vertex form, which has the form of y equals a times x minus h quantity, this quantity squared, plus k, in which h, k is our vertex. The graph is translated h units horizontally and k units vertically. Our axis of symmetry is h. And once again, like in standard form, if a is greater than 0, the graph will open up. And if a is less than 0, the graph will open down. So actually, it's funny, this is in the wrong, sorry, this is in the wrong order. We have this graph less than 0, greater than 0. Now, for this formula, we could have something like y equals 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. So we're going to be solving this problem here, which is to graph y equals negative 1 fourth times the quantity x plus 2 squared plus 5. And just as a reminder, I've put the standard equation here, or not standard, but the general equation here for our vertex form. So first we're going to find the vertex, which is h, k, h and k. So we have negative two and five as our vertex. And you may be wondering why this is negative, but in reality, 
the plus 2 here is really negative, is minus negative 2, which is therefore plus 2. So this value here is what we want in our vertex. Our vertex is negative 2, 5. Then we need to evaluate which way our graph opens. So once again, our a value determines this. Our a value here is negative, so our graph will open down. Then we're going to draw our axis of symmetry. So let's plot our vertex. So we have negative 2, 5. Oh, I'll put it, oh, we can just do this in red. So this is our vertex. And we know it opens down. So if you think about that, um, just visualize that. And then next, we need to find our axis of symmetry. So we know that x equals h, and h in this case is negative 2. So negative 2 is where our axis of symmetry lies. Straight dashed line, label a dash x for our axis of symmetry. Next, we're going to find two more values to plug in. This table here, and if we plug in these points, we have this graph below. So this is our graph with our extra points and we can label our axis of symmetry again. And this is our vertex.